basically we're going to have three life-changing um, stories and um, a little bit of live music for you, um, really that our faith is inspired. Um, so, um, and then we're going to be doing the uh, prize giving for the free raffle at the end. So have we got many people here who have entered that? We've got some down here, some over there. All right, so not that many. We've had, we had about 200 people actually put their name in the hat, so to speak. <laughs> so basically, if they're not here, we're just going to keep going until the people are here. So it sounds like you've got quite a good chance of winning. We've got three really good prizes, a um, electric scooter's first prize, £25 iTunes voucher, and um, a food hamper. So I'm basically going to give my story first, and then I'm going to perform um, a song um, that I've made actually with Tony's um, future daughter-in-law, Rosie. She can't be here, she was here earlier, but she's had to leave, so I've just got a recording of her voice. But anyway, um, a, a quick rundown of how I got involved with Peace Project and um, how basically my faith in Jesus turned my life around. Um, my parents met up when I was quite young and um, went off the rails a little bit, got expelled from school uh, about the age of 14. Um, got quite heavily involved in drugs at the next school I went to and um, to cut a long jewellery store, uh, went really over the top, got um, admitted to drug rehab on two separate occasions and um, I was also uh, dealing in drugs as well so I really went off the rails and I was doing that for about five years. At the age of 20 um, I stopped doing that and um, I was still doing drugs, I was smoking cannabis every day, um, you know, doing cocaine and stuff like that. Um, and I got a job in London, started working in London. Um, and to be honest, I, I felt like my life was pretty good. Um, and uh, then I got involved with a, with a girl, I moved in with my girlfriend for a couple of years. And uh, we ended up splitting up. And um, I moved all my stuff out. I did the normal, normal worldly thing of going out on the town and uh, having loads of pints of Stella, going back to my mate's house, having some really strong weed joints, and um, basically the room just started spinning. Um, I was in a load of emotional turmoil, obviously because of the breakup with my girlfriend, and feeling really, really sick. Um, basically that was when I had to call out for the Lord, and uh, I asked Jesus Christ into my life. And I can honestly say from that morning that I woke up, my life was completely changed. Um, I stopped doing drugs overnight, um, didn't actually drink any alcohol for about six months after that. Um, I've now, I did actually start drinking again after that for a little bit, but I've now given up drinking and smoking cigarettes as well for about two years now, so praise the Lord. Um, looking back on it though, um, I thought my life was alright, but... Now I've come to Christ and um, you know, you sort of changed my heart where I'm not sort of thinking about myself, but thinking about others. Um, I've realised that all those things like drugs and drinking and all that sort of stuff, um, and, well for me personally, it was just like bondage really. And uh, I do feel like I've been set free now. Um, so obviously from that point of view, I now think about others rather than myself. I was very selfish. I was working in London to make as much money as I could and just all for myself really. But through peace projects and other things, I do try and think about other people now. And um, there's, a, there's a lot of uh, disaffected youth out there. So peace projects, um, you know, try and reach out to those youth and show them love and compassion that sometimes maybe they haven't got or they've, they've been in a broken family or something like that. So. Anyway, praise the Lord for what he's done for me, and praise the Lord for giving us good weather today. It's been a good day, so thanks for everyone for coming. Um, I'm just going to perform the song that I've made now. It's a little bit of a sort of rap, um, you know, stroke dance fusion type thing. And then we're going to get um, two of the young guys that came from the last event. Grace is going to give her testimony. And unfortunately, we haven't got an amplification for the guitar. So they can sing a song as well. You might be able to hear it, you might not, so we'll have to wait and see. <laughs>
Cause I know this girl pool never will end Cause it's up to a pimp, my street guard at the centre And you realise it's the way you love to live another day When you realise it's mind is splendour What you do all day you like, thinking you're satisfied No longer more things fight So people just remember to use down the cross For everyone that's us, it's up for you and me So let everyone can see So come on guys, let's start putting them at the centre Everything you need to make your life succeed Not with money and grief, but for the love that you need forever I'm writing poems and love, nothing could ever be enough And I'm singing it all to my saviour You're writing poems and love, nothing could ever be enough And I'm singing it all to my saviour You're writing poems and love, poems and love Poems and love, poems and love You're writing poems and love, nothing could ever be enough And I'm singing it all to my saviour Just reflect some of the love to these people here that you've shown her. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hi guys. Um, sorry, I'm a little bit nervous, but I'm not trying. It's a bit of So, um, yeah, I'm Grace and I'm 18. And um, yeah, I've got seven, no, six siblings actually, so not seven of them. And um, so, with my Christian life, um, I was born in a Christian family. And um, but I would never, I was never been a Christian until um, I decided to be a Christian. So I was doing stuff with my parents wanted me to do, but I was never like you know be a hundred percent Christian. But um, so growing up, yeah, I was just living my own life, and um, from so I've been well from myself. I can say that God um, loves me for who I am, and since. Since I was in, in my mom, my mom's room, because um, my country. Well, I'm from Congo, so if anyone knows the way that it's from, and um, so Congo is like a country that has war in it. And um, in 1997, that's the time I was born, and they were having like a war going on around. And it was by the love of God that I was being able to, you know, come out, come out of this. Um, this world. So, um, so going back, I was doing my own stuff. So I was like, I never cared about you know what um, God has done for my life and how God has saved me from you know being little kids and until until now. Um, so God, um, then, so 
I was doing my own stuff, I was pretty much. <laughs> I never wanted to hear about God, and I never wanted to hear that God that, um, does exist. And then one day I was just praying. Um, so I was praying for, because I was being ill for quite many times. And I mean, we've got it, the, the doctors and the women in the time what's going on. So, and it was just weird, really weird things that was happening through my life. And so I was praying God to heal me and, and then for us to have um, a better education because back um, when we left my country, we had to move to Uganda and then I did not go to um, education for five years. And so I was praying, I was saying, if God doesn't exist, then I want him to do two things for me. I want him to heal me and um, for us to have a better life so that we can have education. And then um, after praying that, well, <laughs> things happened and then one day um, I was going to the church and then someone just came up to me and saying that um, God is real and God still loves you and God, um, he's the one who saved you from your country to here, to, I mean to Uganda and he still loves you and he will, he will hear you and he will um, hear your prayer if you do, if you believe him. And I was thinking, oh, okay then, um, well, I think I believe God, but I just, uh, I don't see it happening. And then just one day I decided to give my life to Jesus 100%. I, I knew God, but I never like, you know, wanted to do everything that I supposed to do as a Christian. But, so I think it's like five years ago, that's when I gave my life to Jesus and things has been changed from since I was, you know, living my own kind of life and still now things have been changed and he loves me and he's, he will continue loving, loving me as who I am. And um, I'm going to sing a song called um, How He Loves Us by Kim Walker. That song is just a song that I always sing, um, I always sing and um, it's just a good song that really pushes me and encourages me through my uh, Christian life.
Dalton, and uh, I'm going to do my song a little bit later, but I thought I'd start also by sharing a little bit about how I became a Christian. And I think the reason that's important is because that's a question, really, I think that is pertinent, or that's important for all of us. You see, the reality is, we don't just live in this life. You know, we don't just die and that's the end of it. No, we are eternal beings. You know, we have a spirit, we have a soul. So that means this body, when it dies, the spirit still exists for eternity. The question is, and really that should be the biggest question for all of us is, what happens after we die? Or where do we think we're gonna go? Or what comes next after all of this? Well, this is my journey of how I found an answer to that question and how I found peace within my own heart. So at age 21, I was at university, University of Essex. I was like any normal student, trying to have a good time, trying to get my grades, to get my future set. And I always had this nagging feeling at the back of my mind. What is the purpose of life? Why do we even bother with all of these things? Can someone give me an explanation for all of the suffering that happens in the world? It all just seems so pointless. Why do we even exist? What's the point in all of that? Well, long story cut short, I, I met a good friend. Uh, it was nothing to do with Christianity. We were just good friends who happened to study the same thing. And we walked in having a conversation around our studies. And I say to him, you know what? Uh, one thing I don't understand is all the pain that's in this world. It all seems so pointless sometimes. And then he said to me, you know what? One thing I can tell you truly is that God has a, has a purpose in all that happens in life. And I said, what do you mean? I respected you up until the point you mentioned God because if there is a God, I think it's really bad at his job because there's a lot of inequality and suffering in the world. Why would God allow all of this to happen? And long story short, I walked away. I was a bit angry with him. I huffed and puffed out. Uh, but he left me with words that kind of like mocked me in my mind. And he said to me, if you are searching for the truth, I promise you this one thing, you will find it only in Jesus Christ. And I was so angry with him, because I said, what gives him the right to say that Jesus is the answer? I mean, there's a lot of religions out there. There are a lot of people who live moral lives. What makes this Jesus any better? Well, I went home and uh, my auntie had bought me a Bible a couple years ago and I'd never opened it. It had dust when I actually picked it up, but I read it. And as I read it, uh, I read from the book of Acts. I read about this man named uh, Paul, this apostle, and uh, how he changed his life, or how he was changed by God, really. And he changed from being this person who opposed God and did not believe in him to someone who then became a Christian. And I realized that this piece of scripture was not just talking about this man's particular journey, but it was talking about all of us and how to an extent when we don't believe in God and continue to live our lives by our terms, we are actually opposed to God himself who loves us and created us. And realizing this, I pretty much was struck in my heart. And uh, for the first time in my life, I, I begged and I said, oh God, I don't understand this Christianity business, but if you are there, help me to understand it because I, I don't get it. And uh, you know, it wasn't like lights shined or anything like that, but the next day a friend of mine just said, hey, why don't we go to church? And for the first time, I didn't make an excuse. I just said, okay, I'll, I'll come with you. And I went and I heard the Bible being preached and I had God being praised and I finally understood what the gospel meant, why Jesus died on the cross. It's not just Easter, there's a reason that he died. And the reason was to pay for our sins because we are imperfect people. And all of that ultimately led to me becoming a believer. I'm still a believer today. And the hope that I have for my future is that Jesus Christ paid the price that could not have been paid by any life that I have. No amount of good deeds could have made me acceptable before God. But because Jesus Christ was born and lived the perfect life, died the perfect death, and in so doing, paid the cost for my sins, I'm now acceptable before God. And that's the hope that I have for the future. So now I'm just going to quickly do my song and then we'll get to the raffle and everything else. Yes. Yes. One, two. This is the gospel, basically. That God sends His Son, Jesus Christ, on the surface of this earth, that He lives and dies. And we can be forgiven because of that. So check it out. 
song. Victory is the song of the saint that's forgiven. Living to the glory of God is but the Lord. I remember sinning, thinking I was winning. I know where the long arm of the Lord can reach all. Soon enough, I ran into a wall and took a fall. The price for my sin was something I couldn't afford. I know the wrath of God should have would have swallowed me whole. But thanks be to God who instead saved my soul. His tender mercies found me at the bottom of the pit. He did not require that I pay for my attire. Wrought in the righteousness of Christ for a sin. Redeemed, I would never have to face the sin. I love you, Lord, you were given to compassion. Now I got your praises on my tongue of repetition. He's even got me posted up and on a mission, proclaiming his glory to the peoples of every nation. Uh, you best believe that I'm willing. Uh -huh. Better believe that I'm willing. Since I found grace, best believe that I'm willing. I'ma serve God till the day I stop breathing. Uh. Yes, so we shout it out so you know we mean it like Like I said before, I wasn't always a Christian In fact, I lived quite a different life before I became a believer But that's the beauty of the gospel You don't have to have been born in a Christian family You can be any, any man, any woman, any child And by believing in what Jesus Christ has already accomplished And it's historical and a fact Your life can be turned around Check it out, my life before. Many times I blasphemed his holy name. Many times I thought of the Father, but with the same, without shame. I was caught up in my own lane, living the lifestyle of the rebel that's within. Even though I couldn't win, kept stuck to my lane. No only did I sin, I didn't recommend to friends. The pity of this fool who was just another tool. I was used by the enemy of good. My God gave himself and alone paid the cost. It was he who suffered the loss on the course. Christ exchanged us for his corpse and made possible for the lost another course. How could I now turn on the one that I get drunk? My eyes have been opened up, finally I behold the glory of the masterful king upon the throne, the very one who caused me the life to be his own. I now walk on a different road and by his grace I'm keeping it until the day I'm gone. Yes, better believe that I'm willing. I'ma serve God till the day I stop breathing like that. Like I said before, it's amazing that we can have barbecues and we can have all these lovely things going on. It's amazing when families can spend time. All of that is brilliant. But the most important question we can ever deal with all of our lives is how do we stand before God and what happens when we die? Thank you. Number one, do you believe in heaven and hell? Number two, do you believe that do you believe that trusting in Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven? And number three, who do you think should go to heaven? Now I need to answer these questions in about five minutes because we don't have much time. We've been here forever. Uh, but basically, the answer to the first question: Do you believe in heaven and hell? Now we use the Bible as the source for all we believe because it is trustworthy. It is accounted for historically. It can be cross-checked. It can be traced back. Its language is flawless. Its Hebrew is Greek. It's Aramaic. It has been translated into English in a trustworthy manner. So that's where we get our answers because we believe that's where God speaks to us. That's the Christian belief. So do you believe in heaven and hell? What does the Bible have to say about it? Well, in Revelations chapter 20, it quickly says this. Uh, this apostle named John had a vision and in this, in this vision God allowed him to see what would happen at the final judgment and this is what John had to say. John says concerning heaven and hell, then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it and by talking about this great white throne he's talking about Jesus himself being set in his rightful position where he is now as king over everything and then he talks about how there was this great book and all the living and the dead were all brought before this um, all the, the great and the small were brought before this king and if anyone's name was not found written in the book they were cast into hell so that's the reality of the bible it doesn't shy away from it it talks about accountability because god created us perfect but because we are imperfect people with our own impulses away from sin hell is a reality that's there heaven is a reality that's there but we'll talk a little bit later about how people can be inside this book to avoid this very real hell. The second question says, do you believe Jesus is, do you believe that trusting in Jesus is the only way to heaven if it does exist? What does the Bible have to say again? 
John chapter 14, Jesus is talking to his disciples just before he leaves them. And he's trying to reassure them that he will always be there. And one of the disciples is saying, well, where are you going? We don't know where you're going. How can we follow you where you are going? And Jesus Christ answers this. He says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one can come to the Father, the Father is God. No one can come to God except through me. One of the many questions we hear as Christians is, is there more than one way to heaven? Why is it just the Christian way? Can't it be the Muslim way or the Jewish way? Well, the Bible again is very clear. It is only through Jesus Christ that one can come to God the Father. And then finally, the last question said, who do you think should be in heaven? And that's interesting, because you know we, we all have an idea of who we want. You know, I want my nan, somebody wants their grandpa, somebody wants their best friend. But again, the Bible gives us a clear answer on who can be in heaven. And concerning this, uh, in the book of Psalms, which is in the Old Testament, it says, who shall ascend the hill of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place? And then it gives an answer to this question by saying, the person with clean hands, the person with a pure heart, the person who has not lifted their soul unto vanity, and the person who has not spoken deceitfully. In other words, it's just saying, who can go into heaven? The perfect person. Now the problem is, we all agree that we are imperfect. But this is where Jesus comes in, you see, because Jesus, having been born, having lived the perfect life, and then having died the perfect death, he was the only person qualified to go before God, and that he did supremely and successfully. And having done this, he made it possible so that anyone who believes, any man, woman, any child, at any point, at any time, if they put their trust in him and what he has accomplished on the cross, he himself, by his power, begins to transform them from the heart and the effect can be seen in the way they live their life. So no, Christianity is not about you putting your best work in to show that you can live a good life. And it's not about morality, but it's about God transforming you from the inside. Those are quickly the answers to those three questions. Thank you for coming um, for coming to the raffle. Now, could I ask the people who entered to come over there and we will quickly run through the answers Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would come me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Oh, 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 oh,